Humans love to categorize things, from animals to plants to diseases and to systems of government. This isn't an alligator, this is a crocodile, this is a monkey and this is an ape. This is an American and this is a Canadian. This person is Asian and this person is Caucasian. This is a liver and this is a kidney. This person is white collar and this person is blue collar. This is a banana and this is a plantain. This person is Jewish and this person is Christian. We love categorization. Unfortunately, we seem to think that by categorizing things, this makes two similar things completely different from one another. But the truth of the matter is, most things are part of the same overarching group. Humans have come up with these fictional categories to make it easier for us to deal with the world around us. And that leads us onto the topic of this video, Capitalism versus Culture versus Government. Many commenters would argue that if we could just take away capitalism, then the world would be a better place. I've argued this point myself. Others say that if we just get rid of government, then capitalism and the free market can reign supreme, creating a fairer and more sane world for all. But what people fail to realize is that all these things are part of the same organism. They're not independent of one another. They're not unique. They're all part of this strange melting pot that we call human society. Take the human body for example. We have a heart and a liver and a brain. Take any of these things away and the body ceases to function. Yes, for the pedants out there, we can take certain things away from the human body, like a kidney or a piece of skin, and a person can still survive, but it weakens that individual. Similarly, we can try to take certain things away from human society, but ultimately it will either hurt us or just be immediately replaced with an alternative. Let me explain. Capitalism is simply an economic system. It's a way to organize the production and distribution of goods and services. There are lots of other examples, for example, manneralism. Think feudalism, where legal and economic power was granted to the lord of the manor, and the lord had power over the peasant population who did all the work and grew all the food. Communal ownership, think tribal bands of hunter-gatherers who had common ownership of the land and would share the resources within the tribe. Socialist market economy, think China with public ownership and state-owned enterprises within a market economy. Society needs this part. We need some way to produce and distribute resources. We cannot remove this from society without destroying society. That's not to say that we can't tinker with it over time to try to make it fairer and more efficient, but certainly, just as the human body needs a heart, so does human society need an economic system. The next part of this organism that we call human society is the government, which we can basically relabel to political system. Of course, governments can take on many forms, all of which are just human constructs of course. We have democracy in the Western world, or at least like to think that we do. Democracy is often labelled power of many. People elect their leaders who are there to represent the civilian population and make decisions on their behalf. There are different forms of democracy, for example direct democracy, but we won't go into that here. There's also oligarchy, often labelled power of few. Think aristocracy, which places strength in the hands of a small, privileged ruling class or the proposed technocracy, where decision-makers are selected on the basis of their expertise in a given scientific or technical field. Oligarchical states are often controlled by families who typically pass on their influence from one generation to the next. Another major political system that we have seen a lot of throughout human history is autocracy, often labelled power of one. Think of systems such as despotism, dictatorship or absolute monarchy, such as modern-day Saudi Arabia. Autocratic governments typically fail because the people end up resenting their cruel leaders. Again, we cannot take this part of human society away. If we take away government, like many proponents of the free market advocate, then society will simply not function properly. Realistically, taking away the government will just result in more government. Let me illustrate. Imagine, for whatever reason, that the Australian or American or Canadian government just disappeared. No more police, no more voting, no more politicians, no more military, no more elected officials. What would happen? Well, I guess most people would just try to continue on with their lives in the same way that they always have. They'll go do their shopping and take their kids to school. That is, if their kids go to a private school. But a handful of people, or more perhaps, will see an opportunity. 
an opportunity to exploit. A group of thugs might get together and decide that they're not going to play by the old rules anymore, and instead go and rob the local Aldi. Who's going to stop them? Some Aldi employees might kick up a stink and try to resist, but in doing so, one of them gets clubbed on the head and told to shut the F up. Some members of the public might try to intervene, but unfortunately, there are too many thugs with too many clubs. Ultimately, Aldi employees and Aldi customers demand action. They form a band of concerned citizens who arm themselves with sticks or pepper spray or whatever. They ultimately need a coordinator to run the whole show, and end up having elections. These groups of concerned citizens start springing up all over the country. The group of thugs want to continue getting discounted goods from Aldi, so they start their own underground organisation where they elect a leader and decide on tactics and strategy. Ultimately, local versions of government slash police have started to spring up everywhere to deal with these potential threats to the local neighbourhood. It's only a matter of time before these groups band together to form regional governments and statewide governments and so on. You see, wherever people gather, they form some kind of government. If you look at the simplest tribal band, you'll see some form of hierarchy. Even if it's just older people are considered more wise than young people, or warriors are considered stronger than farmers. Farmers. The witch doctor has more say over village life than, say, the canoe maker. Ultimately, groups of humans instinctively form governments, or groups, or some form of political system. True anarchy will never exist, because human society will not let it exist. Capitalists and free market proponents who call for the abolition of government interference are basically asking for this part to be removed from society. And quite frankly, that just can't happen. Just as you can't take the liver away from a human body without major consequences, you can't take government away from human society. Perhaps if everyone behaved rationally, then yes, you could live in a governmentless society without any laws and regulations, but we all know that realistically, this is simply not possible. There will always be ratbags and criminals and people willing to exploit others for personal gain. Even if there was only a handful of them, that's still enough for the rational people to band together and start forming some form of government to keep society in check. There is a third part of society that I haven't talked about yet. Culture. Or we could relabel that to cultural system. You could break this further into another category, social system. Or we could combine them both and form socio-cultural system. I told you, right? Humans love categorising things. Anyway, culture is not really the focus of this video, so I'll make it brief. Culture consists of things such as religion, kinship, social hierarchies, marriage, music, tool usage, cooking, etc. Again, it's a vital part of human society. You can't take away people's cultural background without hurting the whole. Although some have tried. Think of cultural and ethnic cleansing. Human society needs all of these parts. Think of it like a bowl of vegetable soup. We have carrots, onions, parsley, mushrooms, tomatoes and potatoes. We blend them all together, add a bit of salt and pepper, and get a yummy broth. Mmm, soup. But then we give it to our three-year-old and he says, Dad, I don't like carrots. Take them out. Sorry son, carrots are an integral part of vegetable soup. We can't take them out just as we can't take government out of society. And the dad is right. Human society is like a big bowl of mixed up categories. We add some politics, we add some religion, we add some capitalism and some hierarchy and some kinship, and mix them all together to get a strange concoction of word salad or alphabet soup. If we try to take any single component out, we fail. It's impossible. You see, all these components are just man-made labels or categories. They are just made-up descriptors of human social interaction. We can't take the lung out of lungfish, nor the macaroni out of macaroni and cheese. If you did, you'd just be left with warm, sloppy cheese. The most we can do with soup is modify the recipe slightly. We can choose to add a bit more salt or a few more tomatoes. Just as in human society, we can choose to add a few more rules and regulations or tweak the ones we already have. We can make it a little bit easier for poor people to get food, or we can allow the elites to get even richer. We can tinker with the recipe that we call human society, but ultimately, every part of it is integral. Human history and tradition has dictated what components are in society. That doesn't mean we shouldn't try to improve it, but we have to understand that it's all integrated. Capitalism, or some form of producing and distributing resources, is vital for society. 
Democracy, or some form of political system, is a natural result of when people band together. Cultural systems organically grow from these individual groups. To say that we can simply remove government and then the free market can prosper is naive. To say that we can just remove capitalism and then society would be better off is also naive. Just as the human body is made up of hearts, livers and lungs, human society is made up of politics, culture and economics. Destroying one is destroying the whole. The only way society would survive without these components is if there was only a single person left. And even then, he'd probably find a way to stuff it all up. Humans are humans. There are good people and there are bad people. There are fighters and there are pacifists. Some people are rational, but many people are irrational. Some people are satisfied with life, but most people complain. That's just the way things are. Without rules and regulations, the whole system goes to hell in a handbasket. Capitalism, culture, government, they're all part of the same organism. Speaking about complaints, if you have a complaint or suggestion about this channel, feel free to pop it in my suggestion box or email the complaints department. They don't work on weekends, nor weekdays for that matter, so don't expect an immediate reply. Cheers!